Uh, here's another quick video on uh, some of the examples provided with uh, Messenger Library. Uh, the one I want to talk about is called the example of recurring event methods. Uh, usually when you are running an actor, often an actor needs to have something that it does periodically. And uh, this is the kind of thing that you might use a timeout uh, in some kind of uh, structure uh, to handle normally. But uh, there's two other methods that are provided with Messenger uh, Library. Uh, let me just run this method quickly. You see how actually this this is this little thing is doing two things. One at a period of 500 uh, milliseconds, and one at a period of 1,000. And I can change these periods. So 50 goes faster. Change this to uh, 123. And again, they both they work independently. If you look at the block diagram, there's actually just one loop. So this loop is doing two different periodic actions at a totally independent period. It's doing it by two methods. Uh, but you don't have to do it by two methods. You can pick one and do multiple things by that uh, one method. Uh, the two methods are one is by a metronome. Uh, metronome is shown up here. Uh, if you look inside this little sub VI, all it's doing, metronome is an actor, uh, like all the other actors. You launch it, send it a message to set its initial period, and then register to receive information for it. So I send it a registration message uh, for its metronome tick messages. Uh, we showed this in a previous video. Uh, I think it was actor to actor communication. Uh, so the metronome, we give it a message that, it want, that we want it to send us, recurring event one. Uh, we handle recurring event one in our message structure. Basically, we're just counting and uh, timing. Uh, and it will just keep sending us messages. And if we want to change the period, we do a set period sub BI. And all that is doing is lightly wrapping a uh, sending a message set period. So when you do that, we can change this period. So five seconds, and we'll wait. But oh, we don't want five seconds, so we actually want to change it back to 50. It changes back. Uh, the other one, let's do that 500. Uh, the other method is a delayed message to self. So here, when we start up, we send ourselves a message, recurring event two, and we just send it to ourself. And in handling that message, when we handle recurring event two, one thing we do is we resend it the same message to ourselves again. Only we send it by this, which is a delayed, uh, delayed sending method. This will send this will asynchronously send us the message on the next millisecond multiple. So it's like uh, the uh, the standard uh, lab view uh, uh, send on next millisecond. Uh, was it wait till next millisecond multiple? Uh, it works the same. We just give it the method. We give it the uh, period we want. And it sends it back to us, back to us in the future. Uh, and so that again, we can change our period because we got the period. We're providing the period here, so I change it to a thousand. It changes. Now, you can use either of these methods, and they both have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the advantage of the metronome is that it will update quickly. So if we send it for every five, send each one of these to every five seconds. And let's say we want to change that period to 50. Uh, let's wait for it to go. It changes right away. That's because we sent it a message to tell it to change its period. And even though it hadn't finished waiting for the last one, it changes its period immediately. Uh, unfortunately for this one though, if we're doing, we want to change it to 50 after we've gone to five, let's wait to change. We see it doesn't change immediately. That's because it's waiting for the previous message. There's no way to change the uh, delay time of the previous message. So that's a disadvantage of delayed message to self. I could set this to 60 seconds, or 60, or how I got a very big number, sending myself a message once an hour, and if I wanted to change that quickly, it would change immediately. This one, I can't do that. If I sent myself a message for uh, one hour in the future, there's no way for me to change that. It will come in an hour in the future, and that's it. Now, the advantage of this one is when it's running really fast, uh, if this loop was delayed, if I were sending myself a message, you know, 10 times a second, and this loop was delayed for some reason by a second, I would have 10 messages from the metronome stacked up, queued up. Uh, so I would have to handle all those 10 messages by some mechanism. Uh, but with the send to yourself, if you have a delay of a second while the period is uh, say 100 milliseconds, this won't have the extra messages because it will wait. There'll only ever be one message waiting for us uh, when we're doing this uh, 
sending a delayed message to ourselves. Here, they can stack up. So that's a, an advantage, often an advantage of this, where you don't want uh, some delay in your code to cause everything to back up. So you have to sort of decide which method is best. Uh, and, I, and, and that depends on the application. If you really need to precisely have exactly a certain number of messages, then you go to the metronome. If you want to just do something in the future, then it's a delayed message to self. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.